Can you explain what's going on in this algorithm? Could you do it in a way that conceptually makes sense to your students? Well, if you're not quite sure, hang around till after the intro and I'll show you how I teach my students two-digit multiplication. Hi, my name's Tom Moore and I'm a maths teacher. And we as maths teachers know all too well that when we start introducing multiplication, some students start to struggle, especially when teaching multiplying two-digit numbers. Now quite often this happens because there's a gap in their understanding of place value and also multiplicative thinking. In this video we're going to have a look at how to teach multiplication of two-digit numbers in a way that will address both of these things. All you're going to need is a multiplication chart like the one you can see here and also some MAB. To find a copy of the multiplication chart look in the description. You will also find in the description there is a great lesson plan which will go through how to do this as well, but relating it back to the rounding lesson that you would have seen in last week's video. So let's have a look at how to multiply two digit numbers using the multiplication chart. Let's have a look at 4 times 13. So as you can see here I have my 4 and my 13, that is 10 and 3 ones. And of course I've represented it using the beginning of the algorithm that you can see here. Now using the model, what we're going to do is have a look at well, what goes here, so therefore it's going to be whatever's this height and this width, so you can see that that's going to be a 10. Whatever's this height and this width, so you can see it's going to be a 1. And we continue to go through and do that until we've thought about all of these outside pieces. So there you have it, you can see 4 times 13 my questions on the outside of the multiplication chart and my answers on the inside. The 4 times the 110 is 4 tenths and the 4 times the 3 ones is going to be 12 ones. Now of course we need to make sure that we simply go through and change over 10 of the ones for 110. So of course 4 times 13 will give us 52, that is 5 tenths and 2 ones. Let's relate that back to the algorithm. If I have 13 times 4, we know the algorithm says 4 times 3 ones is 12 ones, and then 4 ones times 110 is going to be 40 or 4 tenths. And 12 plus 40, of course, is 52. So as you can see, we can demonstrate what is going on in this algorithm to our students by using this model here. Here's where it gets really exciting. I can actually use this model to represent two digit multiplication as well. Let's have a look. So you can see in this question, it says 12 times 13. And I've represented what's happening on the multiplication chart by having 1, 10 and 2, 1s and 1, 10 and 3, 1s to represent 12 and 13. We go through the same process once again. Whatever is this high by whatever is this wide. So we know there that that is going to be a 100. Same with what is this high by what's that wide. So if I have a look, it's going to be a 10. And we go through and we finish it off. Now to get it to make sense to your students when looking at the algorithm, I recommend that you start off with the smallest pieces first. That is the 3 times the 2. So we know that 2 times 3 will give us 6. So then we look at the next largest pieces. That is we have 2 multiplied by the 10, which of course is going to give us 2 tens, or 20. And then we have a look at the 10 multiplied by the 3, which of course is going to give us 3 tens, so that's 30. And then finally, the largest piece, that is the 10 multiplied by the 10, which of course is 100. And when we add this all together, you can see that I have 100, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 56. So 156. And of course, that all adds up going down that way as well. Now, when first introducing the concept of multiplying two digit numbers to students, I strongly recommend that you use just the model to do this and don't worry about the formal algorithm stuff that you can see down here. So get the students to do this a number of times first to really get their head around how the model works. Once they do that, they'll be ready for this next step. When they are ready for the next step, bring them down to the abridged version of the algorithm. And that is they can see here sort of what's going on with the place value because they can see how this relates to what's going on there. That is my six, my two tens, my 3 tens and my 1 100. But of course, that's not the final version of the algorithm that we quite often teach students. And we'll go through that now. 
Now when doing this, the key is to bring in the place value language so that they really understand what it is that's occurring and they can see the links from what's here to what was going on here. I'll show you what I mean. We have two ones multiplied by three ones, which of course is going to be six ones. For this one, I'm gonna have three ones multiplied by 110. So three multiplied by 110 would be 30. And of course, when I join the 30 and the six ones, I'm going to have 36. Coming over to this one now, we have 110 multiplied by two. Well, that's going to be 20. And we have 110 multiplied by 10, which we know is 100. So we just go 100 plus 20 was 120. Now you can see there by bringing in the place value language that we've automatically considered the zero, which quite often we just simply tell students you need to put a zero in the bottom right hand corner. It really brings back the understanding of why we do that. And once again, we simply now need to add them together. So we know that that's going to be 156. The key is bring in the place value language so that it makes sense and they can see links between what's going on here to what we learnt before because they've made the links from here to here. Now, the great thing about this lesson is that, yes, you can use it to teach two-digit multiplication, but you can also use it to teach things like the distributive law using algebra. And we'll come back to that in a video later down the track. Don't forget, you can access a free lesson plan that we've put together by looking in the description. It links the multiplication using arrays with rounding, which we explored in a previous video. Also, like, comment and subscribe so you can keep up to date with all of these videos as they come out. Also, check out the videos that we've done before. My name's Tom Moore, we'll see you next time.